I will present our recent work on concept level explanations to you. So when we talk about explaining of predictions of newer networks, we one usually think of this kind of attribution-based explanation that you have a black box classifier, such as a deep neural network. You have, for instance, an image of a pool table. You get the prediction, in this case, pool table. And what we can do, we can explain this prediction. We can compute attribution maps showing us where, which pixels, which areas in the image are important. Uh, the background of the scene uh, is not so important. So we have various techniques to explain uh, classification decisions. Here is just like an old list with techniques raising with gradient-based uh, explanation methods, occlusion-based methods, um, propagation-based methods. Uh, I think most of you know, 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 know them. But in this talk, I will mainly focus on, on one technique because we will need this for the uh, thing for the concept level explanation technique, which will I which will present later on. So I will first briefly go through layer-wise relevance propagation, a popular technique to explain prediction of neural networks by decomposition. So the idea of LRP is to decompose the, uh, the, the, the prediction output in terms of relevance values in a meaningful way. And LRP does it in a layer by layer fashion. So it doesn't uh, explain the whole thing at once, but it first do the classification. In this case, uh, image of a rooster gets in, some of the intermediate neurons gets activated, they encode something which is related to the image. For instance, some of these intermediate neurons may encode the yellow flowers, others may encode the, the camp of the rooster, and yet the, which are not activated may encode other features of other classes, for example, of the class dog or cat. And in this case, what you get is then a classification decision for the rooster. And what LRP does is to redistribute uh, this classification output backwards through the network in a layer by layer uh, fashion. And basically, there are different types of LRP rules which we came up with. The basic idea is that you kind of measure how much the neuron in the last lower layer has contributed to the activation of the next uh, layer neuron. And by using this contribution here encoded by, by ZJK, so ZJK kind of measures how much uh, neuron J has contributed to the activation of neuron K. Uh, but when having these views, you can proportionally redistribute the relevance which you have assigned to uh, your higher level neurons, in this case to neuron K, which is the neuron of the neural net, the, the rooster prediction. And there are different ways how you can measure these contributions. A very simple approach is just to take into account like the activation and the weight. So in other words, if the neuron J is more activated, it means that it encodes something which is potentially relevant to the classification, which is in the image, which can be like the yellow flowers or the rooster's cum. And uh, WJK is the kind of the weight, the connection, telling you if this feature, this concept, which has been detected by neuron J, is used in the later, uh, yeah, later by neuron K. But so what the important part to remember here is that what we, what we can do with, uh, since we are doing this layer-wise explanation, we can uh, we go through all these intermediate neurons, and these intermediate neurons they encode certain concepts. They are known to encode concepts, which we will see later on. And if you do this backward uh, propagation, what you get in the end is a heat map telling you which uh, which pixels are important for the classification decision. And this, yeah, this decomposition is conservative, which means that the sum of this pixel relevance values assigned to the pixels sum up to the, to the prediction, which you have initially uh, backpropagated. 
And also here the important thing is that you not only get this heat map from the algorithm, but you get also the relevance values for all intermediate neurons. For all intermediate elements of the neural network, you get relevance value. So you know which neuron is particularly relevant for the classification of this specific rooster. This is something which you will uh, use later uh, in, uh, in the presentation. So basically, with this explanation heat maps, you can do many things. So one thing which we did is we use this for validation. You probably know this uh, famous uh, image of horse, where we kind of yeah explained the, 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 the winning method of the international challenge, the Pascal DOC challenge, image classification challenge, found that a lot of predictions which were correct, uh, correct done by the model, were relying on features which were not related to the object class. In this case, the model was classifying the horse image not because of the horse or, or not because of the rider, but because of a copyright tag which was there in many of the training and test images in the data set and which has been not noticed by the organizers of the challenge and also not by the participants for many years. So this is something which you can, if you are lucky, immediately detect from the uh, explanation. You can see immediately what's going on. You can use this information to debug the system, to debug your data set, and to make your predictions more reliable. This is one thing which we did. Another thing what you can do is you can, since you know which neurons are relevant, you can also use this information for pruning or for quantization. In other words, if you if you know that certain neurons are not relevant for, for prediction, you can maybe remove them. You can you can use this as a criterion for quantization, for pruning, uh, uh, for improving your model. This is also some something which we do did with these kind of explanations. You can do also recently we started looking at how can we use it also for scientific uh, applications here is just like one example where we uh, collaborated with some demologists from denmark and they were kind of interested in predicting uh, the mortality of children the risk of, of children dying in the first three years in a western african country and what they did is they, they, they had a model with different socioeconomic uh, factors and what we did is we, we, we trained the model on this data used the explanations to really find out which factors which combination of factors was important for an increased risk and apply clustering to these values to find like really subpopulations with increased risk so for example ch children uh, born in a dry season or children uh, where, where the mother was not there we had a very high risk of 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 dying compared to to the to the baseline risk. So this kind of analysis on data, by you can you can do by post processing explanations by making an analysis on the explanations. Another category of things which we have looked at is to really integrate this explanation directly into the model to to improve the model with the help of the explanation. So in this case, it was an image captioning model where we force the model to, 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 to ground the caption, the generated caption in the image. So in other words, if the baseline model was telling us on the lower image here that the brown dog is sitting in the grass, uh, which is obviously not true, we kind of force the model to, 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 to check for every generated word whether there is positive evidence in the image for it. And by adding this kind of additional loss, we force the model to generate better and um, more meaningful uh, captions, which were consistent with the image, which were kind of which could be also explained by the image. So there are a lot of these things you can do with this uh, yeah, first generation heat maps. So I, I call this like XAI 1.0, the generation of method can be used to not only to explain not only to validate your technique, but also to improve your model, to get scientific insights, and to uh, to improve your model in the best case. But, of course, these attribution maps have also limitations. They, the, and, and this is where 
kind of our new work comes into play. So the question is, how understandable are these explanations? So as I always gave a presentation showing the results of an uh, H predictor. In this case, we trained an H prediction model for faces, and the model predicted for this lady to be between 25 and 32 years old, which is correct. And I showed the explanation to the, to the people and told them, it, it seems that laughing is relevant for, for being predicted as, 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 young, as being young. This is what you, kind of, what you can conclude from the heat map. But at, at, at one conference, I think it was at, CV, at one of the CVPR conferences where I presented this work, people, someone asked me, so how do you really know that it's a laughing? Maybe it's a color of the teeth. So she has very white teeth. Young people often have very young, uh, very white teeth. So how do you know what exactly it is? Is it maybe the, the, the larger mouth, the color of the teeth, the, the bigger lips? Or like, what is the key feature uh, making this, uh, yeah, being responsible for this prediction? This is, and this is true. And when, when I thought about it, I thought, okay, this attribution maps do not give us a full picture. They only tell us where something is relevant, but not exactly what it is. They do not tell us, is it the color? Is it the shape? Is it the size, the volume? Uh, this, is, this we cannot directly get from the attribution maps. We can, of course, try to make sense of them by interpreting them, but we cannot directly uh, get it from them. And another problem is you can you can see a related problem here that here we have like a classifier which was uh, trained on birds, different categories of, of, of birds, and you see that explanations look very similar. So it's always the beak which is important, always the eye of the bird and, and the shape and the feathers, but these heaps do not tell you what kind of what it is exactly is it like the color of the of the beak is it the 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 certain uh, yeah shirts and color or texture of the feathers so what it is exactly and this is where kind of our new work enters so we kind of move from where to what we with this new uh, concept level explanations we call this method concept relevance propagation we can not only see where something is relevant, but also what it is. So this method directly gives us a clue what uh, features are really relevant. And I will, I will guide you through this method. So the uh, contributions contains of three, three things, three parts. So the first kind of extension which we did is uh, we introduced conditional explanations. So here you see uh, the usual explanation process of RP. So you have a prediction dog and we kind of redistribute the relevance of the dog backward to input base. This is what you get when applying LRP. You get a heat map showing that maybe the nose of the dog, the snout of the dog and the eye are quite important. You, can, you, get, you get a picture which is kind of, which contains, which is kind of a superposition of these different concepts, snout, eye, fur, and so on. And what we thought is that assume, assume for the moment that we know that this particular neuron here or this particular filter is responsible for encoding uh, the concept I. If you know this, then you can, you can uh, condition the explanation on this particular uh, filter. So you can just only let the relevance through, which all the relevance which only goes through this filter and all the other relevance you can, you can block out. By having this, you get a conditional explanation. An explanation for the patient dog conditioned on the concept I. In the formula, this is very easy. You just you need to uh, introduce a chronica delta, which lets only this one concept uh, uh, through and everything is filtered out. And if you have it, you can compute a multitude of heat maps, a multitude of explanations conditioned on the different concepts. So, for example, here we have an uh, explanation for the dog and the eye, dog conditioned on the concept snout, dog conditioned on the concept fur. 
and you can even measure the relevance of these individual concepts for the prediction dog, for this, for this specific prediction of the dog. And what you see here is the, the concept fur is more important than the concept I for this prediction. But if you to just look at the superposition of this, all these concepts, you won't see it because the concept fur is distributed all over the image, whereas the concept I is much more focused. So if you look at the unnormalized superposition, um, these things are kind of, yeah, the, the fur concept is spread out and is not really visible. So by having this multitude of explanations, you can really see how much does the concept for, how much does the concept I affect the, as a prediction. And of course, the key question is, how do you know which concept this particular channel encodes? So how do you know that this particular channel is encoding the concept I? This we can find out. And there is a, an old kind of literature of finding or analyzing what particular channels in the neural network are encoding. So there is all this work under the name of feature visualization or activation maximization, where people selected an, a filter and tried to find out what, what is encoded this encoding. So and as a, the work by Zyla, they, they try to find an input which maximizes, for example, this activation for this uh, of a particular channel. There is this work of channel all. They, they use data. They try to find examples in the data set which maximize this particular, the activation of this particular channel. But activation, if you look at it, activation only sees everything from, 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 from the bottom. It doesn't have the past context. Therefore, we the second contribution of our work is we introduce instead of activation maximization, relevance maximization. And relevance maximization takes the task context into account. I will I will show you in a second what it means. So here we found in the in the bottom in, in the top row we found example the data set which maximize the activation of a particular channel. You, you see that these are all different types of examples. You, it would be very hard to understand what exactly this channel is encoding. What kind of shape is it encoding? What, what is the role of this channel, for example, in the prediction of a dog? And in the bottom row, we use the same algorithm, but instead of taking the activation, we use the relevance values, which we computed by LRP. And you see very clearly the, what is the role of this particular channel in the prediction of a dog. In this case, the channel is encoding kind of the, yeah, the nose and the front, frontal face of the dog. So you have a much focused picture, you have a much focused uh, 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 idea of of what what is the role of this particular neuron? So th th this kind of helps you to answer the question: what a particular channel is encoding? And the third contribution is that we kind of even refined it. So assume that your algorithm gave you reference samples. So these six samples you get from this uh, uh, relevance maximization, they, they, they show you what this channel is encoding. But it's very hard to see in the full image what exactly is a common feature. Therefore, what we did is we kind of first zoomed in into the receptive field of this particular channel, and then rescaled these images, computed the, computed the heat map for, for them, and then uh, masked them, and you see exactly here, very clearly, what this particular channel has for the prediction. In this case, it encodes red color. So you have a focused uh, visualization of the role of a particular channel of the neural network for the uh, particular prediction. 
and here here you have it all together. So we, we have an image. It's a it's, it's a kind of bird which we have here. We classify this bird, and then what we do is we find is, instead of computing the the, the the heat map for it, the one, this one attribution map, we find the five the five most relevant intermediate channels. So, for example, the channels in the last convolution layer. And 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 these are the five most relevant channels for this particular classification. And then you can you can compute this conditional heat maps which we saw before. This conditional heat maps which is here, they tell you what these where the channels are looking at. What is the condition and explanation condition on this particular channel? And this is what you see. Uh, um, what you see here in, in, the, in, the, in, in the first uh, column, the conditional heat map. And you see that the uh, channel 10 and 187 is focusing more on the, on, on, the, on the head of the bird, while channel 210 and, and 130 are more focused on, 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 the, on, on, on the body of the, of the bird. And then you can use this relevance maximization search to find meaningful reference images in your data set. And these reference images can help you to understand what these channels are responsible for. And in this case, you see, for example, the channel 10 is mainly encoding red color, red stripes. And this red, so the fact that the bird has a red stripe is quite important for the classification decision. It contributes almost 2% to the overall relevance. Then you have channels which are encoding like the, like the texture of the bird, of the feathers. You, you can see exactly like which channels are responsible for it, how much these particular concepts uh, are important. And this is what we call like a concept-based explanation. You not only have an explanation telling you what has happened, or not only telling you where something is relevant, but you have an explanation conditioned on these different concepts, and you have a visualization of, 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 of the role of this particular neural network elements, helping you to understand what they are doing, what they are encoding. And you can, you can label them, you can say, okay, for, for this classification, it is important that, that there is a red stripe, it is important that there is a dotted shape, it is important that, that there is uh, channel 180 seven encodes black eyes so it's important that the bird has a black eye so you can have an explanation on a more abstract more human understandable uh, level so it's kind of our method is kind of a combination of local xi and global xi traditionally local xi is trying to explain individual predictions telling you computing with this heat maps, this attribution maps, telling you where something is, where something is relevant. Where global XAI originally tries to understand the representation of the model. So what exactly are different elements of the model representing, encoding? But, you, but usually this research has been done on a, on, on a, on, on a global scale. So, and, and here we are able, combining these two directions, we are able to explain individual predictions in a more meaningful ma manner by relating to the representation of the model. I will just show some examples of what we can do with these techniques. We can, for example, here analyze uh, in, in local regions what kind of um, concepts dominate in this region. Here we have like a we have defined two regions of interest one and two on, on, on the left you see like the three most relevant channels which uh, occur in region one so where there is an orange beak of the of this bird and you see that in this case the color concepts dominate so neurons are activated channels are activated which encode color red color orange color ye yellowish color so this is this seems to be like a, the most relevant concept here, which is of course clear because like this, the color of this beak is quite 
important for the, or quite unique for this particular bird. And in region two, you have more texture-like concepts. You, you, you see it on the right. So you see channels which encode more textures and, 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 and feathers and more regular uh, uh, shapes. So you can do this local analysis. You can even you can even analyze the composition of concepts. You can see, for example, here starting from the right, we have a prediction B eater. You can see which channels were important for it. So for example, channel 102 was, has contributed 4% to the prediction. And you can visualize what this channel is encoding. And it seems that here it's mostly encoding animals sitting on a branch. And then you can ask yourself which lower layer Low, lower layer features are contributing to channel 102 and there are some channel for example 506 uh, contributes a lot to this channel 102 and it's mostly encoding like colorful bushy feathers whereas channel 51 is also contributing but is, is encoding like horizontal shapes horizontal bars and you can do it all the way through the network to really see the composition of concepts so how one concept composes it is composed of several lower le level concepts you can understand concept spaces so here we, we we have like two very similar classes so we have uh, like a tv control which contains the buttons right and you have a laptop which also contains buttons and you see that there are in the in the network there is a channel 40 uh, 94 and 7 which is relevant for predicting uh, the buttons for, for predicting the tv control because it encodes buttons which are roundish which are small uh, which kind of occur which appear on this tv control whereas channel 357 and of and 446 encode other types of buttons uh, which are more flat and more keyboard keys and you see on this conditional map uh, on, on the left you see for example that when predicting tv control the first channels uh, have a red which means that they they support the prediction while the two other channels are blue which means that they kind of the neural network tries to disentangle these two concepts so it, it really predicts tv control because it finds these kind of buttons which are represented by channel 40 uh, 94 and 7 and it does not find uh, buttons which are represented by channel 357 and 446 and you see it the other way around when having this laptop as, as input and when you just look at this activation map you don't see this behavior because the activation doesn't have this task context so with relevance maximization you really can separate uh, yeah this kind of a weighted activation which has has this uh, task context and this is also like a very cool example where we use the concepts to identify clever hans examples so we we have an input uh, of a safe this Im this image has been predicted at safe but we found that in, in the middle of the image, there are some Chinese characters and, and they are also relevant. They are also deemed relevant by the neural network. And we, we ask ourselves, what kind of channels are encoding these characters? Which channels are most relevant in this region? And we found six channels. And then we ask ourselves, in which other images, in which other classes are these six channels also relevant? And you see, for example, here in, in, in the image whistle and, and mop and screw and mosquito net and can opener, these six channels are also relevant. And avocadabra, you see that there is also the Chinese characters. So based on the activation of, of the relevance pattern, of, of not the activation pattern, the relevance pattern of these particular clever Hans channels, which we found, we could, we could also find examples which are yeah clever hansish which are kind of bad so so what, what you could think what we thought initially is okay maybe we should remove these channels because they are doing something stupid they are encoding some chinese characters 
which are not rel related to the classes, maybe we should remove them. But then we saw that there were other classes like the Puma or the spider web, where these channels are also important, but there are no Chinese characters there. So it seems, if you think about it from the perspective of the neural network, a spider web or this, this, this hair of the Puma, they look like a Chinese characters because these are very thin white strokes on, on, on background. So for the neural network, it looks the same. Uh, but, but for us, of course, concepts are different. Therefore, just removing this, uh, uh, yeah, these neurons or these channels wouldn't solve the problem because it would lead to a decrease in classification performance for Puma or Spiderweb. So you need a more adaptive uh, yeah, debugging techniques. We are currently working on some more adaptive approach to debugging uh, neural networks. We also um, did some human studies. So the reviewers of our paper, they, um, they forced us to do a human evaluation, which I think is a very, very, very good thing because it, it really forced us to think about uh, and, and really demonstrate that these explanations are more informative for the human than local explanations. And we did a very simple study. We constructed like a, uh, in inputs with, uh, with an artifact, with a border artifact. So there were, there were two models. So one model was trained on, on clean images and one model was trained on images containing this artifact. And uh, so one, this, this one model was kind of a clever Hans model, right? It was also focusing on the, on the border instead of the object. Or in addition to the object, it was, it was uh, focusing on the border. And we wanted the human to find out whether from the explanation, whether the uh, image has been classified by a trustworthy model or by the model which was, which, which, which contains some artifact. And we presented different types of explanations to the human and wanted to, to see whether this explanation can help to identify the trustworthy model and to separate the trustworthy model from the biased one. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and most, if you look at the accuracy uh, when presented with uh, the CRP explanations, uh, the human was, the participants were much better able to identify false behavior of the model than when presented uh, integrated gradients, LRP, SHAP, or Gretkin explanations. So these explanations have this additional information. They are, they kind of not, they are not, yeah, they are kind of decoupled and uh, therefore are more informative. The last but not least, so we are in this process now of really to combine these different views on models. So we are originally come from this data set level XAI, where we explain individual predictions, where we do the analysis over the whole data set to really find some common behavior, common patterns. In this work, we combine this data set level XAI with a model level XAI, where we bring the model representation into the game. We now not only explain the data, but also relate this explanation to the model. So we explain in terms of concepts, which the model channels with the model, the, the intermediate neurons are kind of encoding. And what we further need and what, where we are really also very interested in to also bring the human into the loop, to have like a data set level, model level, and human level XAI. So that if the human can, can uh, yeah, validate and, 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 and update and understand the explanations so that the explanations are tailored to the human. And this is, I think, uh, what we really need in the future and where we see uh, yeah, a lot of improvements, especially we need this kind of research for non-image data, where we, we explain predictions of a time series, predictions of other types of, uh, of data, which are more difficult to understand by, by, uh, intrinsically. So with that, uh, I'm happy to also sh uh, yeah, make some uh, advertisement for our new book, uh, where we kind of try to summarize this new direction. So, not only to explain, but also explain and improve the model concept level, learning, 
uh, beyond explaining. So all, all these new, very interesting directions are, are summarized in this book, which is open access. Uh, we also have a lot of toolboxes uh, which you can use. So Zenit is the toolbox which we use for, for explaining. Quantus is a very new toolbox, very interesting, which we use to evaluate explanations. So we implemented over 30 different evaluation schemes for, uh, for explanations. Um, yeah, we have some reference papers and uh, this literature can be also found on on our heatmapping.org homepage. And with that, I'm, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much.